I'm here at Embedded World 2025 and I'm on the Wind River stand to have a chat with Avjeet Singha, who is the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Global Business Development. So thank you very much for joining us. How are you today? I'm doing great, Paige. Thanks for coming and thanks for your time. Looking forward to the conversation here. Fantastic. So can you introduce yourself for us and tell us a little bit about the company? Sure. Uh, so as you said, I'm the Senior Vice President for Strategy and Business Development. Um, so I look at our forward-looking investments. Uh, to get the company to skate to where the puck is going to be mm -hmm. uh, while we make sure we serve our customers today. Uh, Wind River as a company has been there for about 40 years. Uh, we are a leader in developing software for embedded edge and cloud uh, systems for mission critical industries such as aerospace and defense, telecommunications, industrial, automotive, drones and robotics and medical systems. Uh, we pride ourselves on building software for customers where our assets and their assets actually operate in dirty, dangerous, and difficult environments where you know, safety, security, reliability, performance is uh, really critical. Okay. Um, so that's our uh, core DNA and our expertise, and uh, we've got a great business uh, that our customers trust us with. Okay, well, let's chat about that further and, and focus in on the intelligent edge. So how do you define the concept of the intelligent edge, and what role does AI play in this transformation? Yeah, look, the edge uh, is in some ways an evolution of the embedded system, if you will, right? Um, the edge is essentially one which is kind of between the cloud and uh, at the far, far end, a sensor and a device and everything else in between. And so we've built software and systems going all the way from the sensor mm -hmm. to the cloud. Now, what's happening is that AI that is birthed in the cloud is increasingly being uh, executed at the edge because training is happening in the cloud and inference is happening at the edge. So the intelligent edge is essentially an embedded or an edge system that is connected with the cloud, but can work without the cloud and execute applications that are AI enabled to perceive the environment, whether it might be vision or audio or some other sensory input, like from a radar or a camera or a accelerometer or you know a medical sensor, if you will, yeah. to take that sensory input and to be able to infer and basically detect patterns and execute logic AI enabled at the edge, disconnected from the cloud. That is really what the intelligent edge is. That's the best description of the intelligent edge I've heard all week. <laughs> well done. Um, so as you've said, Wind River's portfolio is positioned as software for the intelligent edge. So what, what value does the intelligent edge deliver to organizations? Yeah, look, um, at the edge, uh, what is really important, especially in mission critical scenarios where lives are at stake, is real-time execution of either application code or AI inference. And so therefore, you can't have reliability on connectivity that okay. may cause that scenario not to occur in real time because a heart rate monitor or an autonomous driving vehicle or a drone has to react in million microseconds because lives are at stake. Mm -hmm. So something dangerous or hazardous will happen. And so that's why it's really important that AI gets executed in a performance envelope that is one, reliable and safe and secure. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, many of these assets um, operate in a very constrained environment in power or otherwise right so it has to be so to speak uh, operating away from the cloud with no uh, connectivity and then the last thing I'll share with you is it's got to be done in a manner where privacy and security are respected uh, because you know data can basically uh, you know leak out of it yep. or you might have scenarios where security causes uh, a disaster yeah definitely and i see here that that you're showcasing technology with edge impulse and zedida as well as being on a panel with the two companies um so how are you working with the ecosystem to enable ai at the edge yeah look edge impulse and zedida are really great startups in fact uh, you know on monday Qualcomm announced that Edge Impulse, they were going to acquire yes. Edge Impulse. Yep. We've been working with them for about eight or nine months. And uh, both of those companies are building some innovative capabilities that are very complementary to uh, what we do. And in fact, we're very aligned on our vision and our ambition to enable the intelligent edge. So Edge Impulse builds AI and ML ops that enables machine learning and AI practitioners to develop AI in the cloud and be able to deploy it in a performant manner at the edge. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of techniques that they can compress that model to run in a performant manner at the edge. Mm. Zedida is able to uh, drive automation and orchestration of AI models and applications that are developed in the cloud, but executed at the edge. Mm -hmm. And we fundamentally are the organizing layer, right? So we have the operating systems, we have the security right. and the DevOps layer. So mm -hmm. the combination of the capabilities across the three companies uh, is able to give our customers across industries a end-to-end -end system composed of an operating system, safety, security, automation and orchestration, DevOps, AI and MLOps 
uh, to basically build an end-to-end -end intelligent edge system. Mm. And so that's why we partnered with them. And uh, for Wind River, in addition to partnering with the traditional partners, the semiconductor folks, the OEMs and ODMs and system integrators, we are starting to partner very closely with the startup ecosystem because we are seeing a lot of bleeding edge innovation yes. that's happening there that is critical to realizing AI at the edge. Mm -hmm. And that's really why we've started partnering with companies like uh, Zedida and Edge Impulse. And you know, the power of the partnership is really showcasing through now based on the demos that we're showing at their booth and ours over here. Yeah, definitely. I was at CES at the beginning of the year in the startups area and the amount of innovation in AI was incredible. It was fantastic to see, so yeah. <laughs> Um, what, what are the key industry sectors benefiting from this shift towards the, the intelligent edge? Yeah, it's, look, it's very secular. Um, in all the industries that we operate in, right, aerospace and defense, telco, industrial, automotive, okay. drones, robotics, medic, all of them benefit. I think the difference is that certain industries are moving at different paces to adopt this for very good reasons, because regulation might come into play or the ability of that industry to adopt the technology pattern and mainstream it might be different. But we see a secular uh, you know, movement happening in this direction. But because we are multi-industry, we are able to pace ourselves and match the pace of our customers in those industries based on the different characteristics that influence the adoption of technology. So we are very well positioned because we can take actually cross-pollinate learnings from industry to industry. Mm -hmm. So that's the benefit our customers have because we can learn in aerospace and defense and bring that innovation to automotive. Okay. Or we can learn in telco and bring it to industrial for mm. that. And what about mission critical applications in particular? Why would they benefit? Yeah, look, most mission critical applications up until this point have been based on static logic okay. that a developer has written at the time of writing code, right? It's statically built dynamically executed. However, once it's built, it's fixed. Right. It only knows what it needs to do by, based on the logic it's been trained to do on. AI gives its ability to infer things based on new input that's coming in and to retrain that model, to re-perceive the environment and to be more reactive to the situational and the con uh, situational context it's running in, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have intelligence embedded in the application, so it's not operating on fixed logic, but it's becoming perceptive to the environment and is able to react based on contextual uh, information that it's getting in as opposed to pre-programmed logic, right? Okay. And that's really important in mission critical scenarios because in mission critical scenarios, you can preconceive a lot of scenarios, but when you're in a battlefield, you don't quite know what's going to happen. No. So you need the smarts in the system to be able to react to an unforeseen event or situation and not be frozen in time. Mm -hmm. So in mission critical environments, in fact, AI enablement becomes even more important because you want to be able to re uh, re um, you know, react to the unforeseen uh, in, in, the real, in the real time. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you've recently introduced a, a Linux offering for yes. AI and critical workloads. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, look, we're very excited about Elixir Pro, which is our new uh, Linux offering. It's based off of uh, Debian and then Elixir Pro, which is an, uh, uh, you know based off of the Elixir uh, open source project. Okay. And the reason we birthed this was because there's obviously a lot of Linux in the market. Yes. Majority of that Linux is either built for enterprise IT scenarios or for far edge embedded systems, but it's built for static uh, you know, logic, whether it's in IT or in the embedded stuff. You need a new Linux that is built for the AI era, right? And is capable of running AI workloads at the edge and at the enterprise. So Elixir Pro does precisely that. The last thing I'll share with you is that it is built to be secure because we need to make it run in an edge constrained environment. So what we've done is we've shrunk it down just to the necessary packages. So that does two things. One, it makes it more performant. So we can run on compute and resource and storage constrained mm -hmm. environment. The other thing is because it's shrunk down size, the exposure surface goes down. And so from a security standpoint, the number of CVs that need to be serviced over a lifetime also reduces. So it's performant, it's compact, it's far more secure. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear, given, given all you've said, how do you see Edge AI evolving over the next, say, five years? No, I think we live in very interesting times. We're just getting started on this. Yeah. I think AI in the cloud itself is going through a massive amount of evolution at mm -hmm. an unprecedented pace. And so we will certainly see that happen at uh, the edge as well. We're in very early days where today with microcontrollers and microprocessors, some amount of AI logic is being executed. But now you're starting to see the implementation of NPUs and TPUs and obviously GPUs where the different kind of math that is required on neural processing or tensor processing is being executed. Right. Mm -hmm. So as more of these NPUs and TPUs and GPUs become baked into edge systems or embedded systems, you will see a lot of that being exploited 
by the operating system and the application logic, right? So that evolution will happen. The second thing that's going to happen is a lot of the AI models that are built in the cloud, whether those are transformer models or large language models or based on CNNs and DNNs, they will need to be compressed uh, to be run in a resource considered environment. So there are many techniques like pruning and quantization and knowledge distillation and sparsity models that are going to evolve. And then the compilers that have to basically transform the model into a compiled unit that can run on a specific silicon, uh, that's going to change as well. Okay. So there's a lot of innovation that's going to happen, not just in the cloud to make these models more robust and safe, secure and capable, but that at the end of the day, you've got to compress them so that they can run in this edge constrained environment in a safe, secure manner. So a ton of innovation that's going to happen uh, you know, every level of the stack, yeah. starting from the silicon all the way up to the cloud and the application layer and everything else in between. And that's why we are leading into this because we are staying ahead of where, so to speak, you know, the industry is going to be so that we are ready as this technology matures to enable our customers to really capitalize on it. Will Edge AI eventually replace certain cloud AI workloads or, or will it always function as a, as a complement to, to, you know, cloud AI? You know, I view that as being complementary because I think AI fundamentally has a role in the cloud. Yeah. I mean, just given all the characteristics there of elastic storage, compute, and networking, right? And a lot mm -hmm. of applications will fundamentally rely on training in the cloud and inference in the cloud. But a lot of AI that will run at the edge will rely on inference at the uh, to start with. But increasingly, training is also moving towards the edge. So I see this as a continuum all the way from the sensor to the cloud, mm -hmm. different layers of compute and storage and networking cap capacity, and therefore AI being at different uh, you know, endpoints in that spectrum and being executed in a concert with every other uh, point in that spectrum, right? Yeah. So I think it's going to be a complementary thing. It's not going to be binary where you have a device and cloud. There are going to be things in you know, gateways and servers in between, yeah. and you're going to have AI execute uh, at different points working in concert with the other points in that whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's certainly a very exciting space to be working in at the moment. So. No, it's super exciting. Yeah. You know, this is uh, where Windrover is taking our customers with. We are in this to make the intelligent edge come about, mm -hmm. and specifically for mission critical yeah. industries. And how has the show been for you so far? How's Embedded World been? It's been super busy. Yeah. Um, just like you, you know, back-to-back -back <laughs> meetings. Yeah. But just very exciting conversations uh, with our partners and customers who are excited about what we're doing. We are learning from them. In some cases, we are capitalizing on the implementation there, like Zedida and Edge Impulse. Yeah. I've been walking the show floors and just seeing that, and you mentioned earlier, everybody's talking about IoT, connected devices, mm -hmm. edge computing, edge AI. So it's just validation for us that we are doing the right thing at the right pace for the right outcome for our cost, um, customers and partners. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. It's been a real pleasure, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Well, thanks, Paige. It's been a great conversation. Thank, thank you. you.